Thank you so much for joining me today. First, you have a very remarkable story regarding Mark Stroman, who's about to be executed by the state of Texas. Could you tell your story to our listeners? Sure. Well, uh, my name is Reis Puyan, and I was born in Bangladesh, and I'm an Israeli U.S. citizen. I came to the United States to fulfill my lifelong dream to pursue higher education and to experience the American dream. But uh, within a short time, my life was completely changed because of one single incident. The World Trip Center tragedy on September 11, 2001. I was working in a gas station during that time, and uh, it was September 21, 2001. A gunman entered this uh, entered the station where I was working, wearing bandana, sunglasses, baseball cap, and pointing a gun directly towards my face. So from my previous robbery experience, I thought there would be another robbery. So I offered him the cash and I requested him not to shoot me. But in response, he asked me, where are you from? And that question seems strange to ask during a robbery. So I replied, excuse me. And as soon as I spoke, I felt the sensation of a million bees stinging my face and then heard an explosion. Uh, images of my mother, my father, other siblings and my fiance appeared before my eyes and then a graveyard. I wasn't sure if I was still alive. I looked down and I saw blood was pouring like an open faucet from the right side of my head. And I remember myself screaming, Mom. And at the same time, I was thinking that maybe I'm dying today because I was shot in the head and my face. I started reciting from Holy Quran and I was asking God that give me a chance, please. I don't want to die today. Please give me a chance. And then I looked left and I saw the gunman was still standing and looking at me. I thought if I don't pretend I'm dying, maybe he'll shoot me again. So I jumped on the floor and within a few seconds he left. And I was thinking that, I, that maybe I'm, I'm dying today. So I have to stay positive, stay active and energetic and keep on praying to God. And I thought I, if I stay inside the store and if I pass out, nobody may see me that that there is a body or there's someone inside the store who needs help. So I grabbed the phone and I got out of the store and ran toward the next store, which was a barber shop. I entered the store by running and I, I grabbed one of them because they were trying to run away from me because they thought the killer was coming behind me. So I grabbed one of them and I requested, please call 911, I don't want to die today. And that is the first time I saw my face on the mirror full of blood, and my body was full of blood as well. And they called 911, ambulance came, and I ran towards the ambulance. Can you tell us, what did you see in your attacker's face? Well, he, he was wearing bandana, sunglasses, and a baseball cap, so I really couldn't see uh, the eyes or the... Uh, entire face, but at some point while well, he, he, he talked to me, the uh, uh came out and uh, I could see he had a mustache and uh, uh, very angry and, uh, you know, kind of like a, um, he was in a mission that, you know, he, he wanted something more than than money and I feel that he, has, he, he had anger in his voice. And can you tell us uh, how long did it take you to recover? I mean, I know you probably will never recover emotionally, but how long did it take you physically to recover? Well, um, I was shot from four to five feet away by the way of a shotgun, and um, I, I received medical treatment for several years, and uh, finally the doctor could save my eye, but the vision is gone from the right eye and I'm still carrying more than 35 pellets on the right side of my face and my head. And, um, but now uh, uh, I'm okay. I mean, mentally, psychologically, emotionally, I have overcome. I have um, went through a healing process. I'm much better right now. And, of course, that is the most amazing part of this story, is that someone who is has already been condemned to die by the state of Texas, who has been convicted by trial and jury, you are saying, do not kill this man. How did you come to that emotional and uh, really healing kind of decision? 
Well, um, my upbringing and my Islamic faith uh, taught me that forgiveness is the best policy. And also in, in Islam it says, you know, if saving a human life is like saving the entire mankind. I forgive Mark Sherman many years ago. I never hated him. But, you know, once I went through the healing process, I grew mentally and spiritually, and I was thinking that by executing him, what we will achieve. Mm -hmm. What he did that was a hate crime, and hate comes from ignorance. And Mark Sherman was ignorant because he did not realize that killing somebody in Dallas, Texas, would be the right thing to do what happened in return, what happened in New York City on September 2001. So um, I was thinking that what he did that was hate crime, and we see hate crime all over the world based on color, faith, and religion. So his execution will not eradicate hate crimes from the world, but we will simply lose a human life. But what we can achieve if we save his life, since he also went through a healing process and learned from his mistake, and he had a chance to change his heart, so if we give him a chance, maybe one day he'll become a spokesperson against hate crimes and will be able to educate many other people, those who are as ignorant as him. So <clears throat> saving his life, we'll get something. But if he's gone, if he's executed, then we are not getting anything out of this. We, we suffered, me and the other victims, we suffered, we lost a lot of things. We'll not get those back. But if we can save him, We'll be able to at least educate people. And if Mark Sturman touched one life, if he can educate one person, that is an achievement. But if he's gone, it's not only a life is gone, also a hope, a chance of change. Those things will also gone at the same time. So those things encourage me that hate is not the solution, killing is not the solution. We all like to live in a better world, in a peaceful world. And if this guy can contribute towards that, so why shouldn't we take a chance? and also give him a chance to help others. You are at the moment, of course, involved in a lawsuit against Governor Rick Perry to save the life of Mark Stroman. Let's listen to your spokesperson introducing you and the suit that you had filed last week at a press conference. Attorney Kurem Wahid has filed a lawsuit on behalf of Ray Spuyan seeking to vindicate his rights under the Texas Victims' Rights Act and the Texas and U.S. constitutions. And this lawsuit seeks an injunction for, of the execution of Mark Stroman so that Mr. Bouillon can pursue his right to victim offender mediation and to meet with uh, Mr. Stroman and to vindicate the, uh, his rights under the Texas Victims' Rights Act that had been previously denied to him. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I have requested a uh, board of uh, partisan parole to uh, give me a chance to meet with them and also Texas Department of Criminal Justice to allow me meet with Mark so that I could go through a mediation process as a victim and, and offender. Uh, but I haven't heard anything from either of these boards. And at the same time, I'd like to also mention this quote from Governor Perry's decree that April 10 to 16, 2011 would be the victim's rights week. And he said, I encourage all Texans to join in this effort by learning more about victims' rights and supporting victims of crimes whenever possible. We can help our fellow Texans on the road to recovery with compassion and respect. So that is Governor Rick Perry's voice. That is his, his message. And yet you don't, and, he certainly isn't giving you that particular option, is that right? Right. So in in this particular case, as a victim, I mean, I'm not exercising my rights. I'm, my rights are violated because he's going to put to death. And as a victim, my request is, my request is not hard. So that's why I, I thought that I need to take it to the uh, legal system and request Governor Perry and the justice system to allow me to go through a mediation process with my offender. Have you actually met face-to-face -face with Mark Stroman since that day? I never met him face to face except the courtroom, but uh, I, that's what I, I requested for to allow me to see him in person so that we can go through this mediation process. And the mediation process itself, what do you expect to get from that? Well, I would like to understand his side, his, you know, uh, his thought that, you know, um, why he did, how he did, and also I'd like to hear from his side that how, what 
what things motivate him and how he has changed and also you know how he, um, it, it also helped me to go through a healing process and also to understand from his side and how he has changed and that will help me to move on are you finding support from the anti-death penalty groups around Texas? Well, it's not only anti-death penalty group. It's, I should say that all he, human beings are supporting me. Nevertheless, despite of their color, their religion, their beliefs, people from Dallas, Texas, all over the USA, all over the world, starting from Brazil to Sydney to Norway to Bangladesh, my home country, where people are finding this story. They're coming online. They're, they're signing this online petition and also joining the Facebook group and, and telling me, go for it. This is something new. We, we, we like to see something like this for a better world, peaceful world. So I have their support, tremendous amount of support to stop this execution and to take a new narrative of passion, forgiveness, and healing. While we have a, a moment, why don't you go ahead and tell us what that Facebook group is and the URL for the online petition, if you happen to know it. From the beginning of this campaign, I built a website. It's called worldwithouthate.org. I'm running this website and also created a Facebook group called World Without Hate Group. So people are uh, going to that. People are going to that website and signing online petition, which I have uploaded in that website. And also people are giving their feedback, their comments on the Facebook group, and I'm also updating that group on a regular basis. And again, uh, that petition specifically is to stop the execution of Mark Stroman, which is going to happen um, next week. This, we're recording this, of course, in July the 16th on a Saturday, and next week is the scheduled execution. Is that correct? Right. That's what I did. I uploaded the petition online and requesting people to sign so that uh, we can pass it to the Board of Prudence and Parole to lower Mark's punishment from death to life. Why do you think that life is a better sentence for this? Well, um, when killing is wrong, first of all, and what Mark Stroman did, that was a hate crime. And I, like I said before, that nowadays we see hate crimes all over the world. So his execution will not eradicate hate crimes from the world, but if he's given a chance, since he learned from his life, he, had, he made a terrible mistake, there's no doubt about that. He killed innocent people. Since he had a chance to change his heart, so let's pass this message to people outside, inside the prison, that not to follow Mark Stroman path, then you will end up like him. And that's not the right way to do it. That's not the right way to deal with others. Yes, definitely we'll have differences everywhere, all the time. But that difference should not divide us. That difference should not cause any kind of pain and suffering in anyone's life. And Mark Stroman could be a, a very good example to spread that message across the world that what I did that was wrong. I did not realize killing some brown skinned people would be the right thing. Killing some Muslims would be the right thing to do what happened in New York City. Killing is not the solution. Hate is not the solution. Who can be better than Mark Sturman to talk about this? That's why I, I strongly believe, and that's why I'm running this campaign, save this life and let's move on. We, we suffered enough for the last 10 years after September 11. People are living in fear. People are living in phobia. So let's break the cycle of hate and violence. Let's start from here. Let's, let's build a bridge between victims and victimizers so that people can take a lesson from this and they can move on in their own lives. And that's why it's very important to save this life so that people can see, yes, still we can live together, still we can move forward despite our bad experiences through forgiveness, through passion, through tolerance. Breaking the cycle of hate and violence, that's a, a very powerful message. And of course, you have been working to get that out. It's, it's quite amazing.